Today I'm going to show you nine paddle strategies that you can instantly use in your matches and tournaments. The first strategy we're going to talk about today is the maintaining strategy. In this strategy, you will maintain the net as much as physically possible. Usually for most paddle players, when they get lobbed, they'll let it bounce if it goes around this white line. In this strategy, you will still play a bandeca or more of a maintaining shot and move back to the net position. So first of all in paddle, we need to remember that 90% of the points are won at the net position. The idea is to make it as hard as possible for your opponents to take the net off you. Even if you're moving back, you know, all the way past this, this white line here, you're still gonna play a bandeca and then come back to the net position. This can make your opponents feel stuck at the back of the court. They might try and put a little bit extra on that lob to get it right over you and then there's the chance that it might miss and hit it long. It is very hard for your opponents to win the point at the back of the court. So if you're always keeping the net and not letting them come in at all, you've got a big chance of winning the point. Dad being an intermediate player, it's tricky, it's frustrating when you keep lobbing and they just keep moving back to the white line and maintain and maintain and then you saw the error comes. Paddle strategy number two is the lob strategy. This is when you and your partner are gonna play tons of lobs to one player. Different heights, angles, towards their forehand, towards their backhand side. This strategy is very effective, especially against beginner and intermediate players. The amount of mistakes that come from overheads is crazy high at those levels. And if you constantly target those overheads, you're gonna get so many free points just from them missing. This also works at advanced level, not as much because players are a lot more consistent and have the shots. What it does is it buys you so much time when you're playing. The lob strategy can also make that player feel very pressured. If they're constantly having to do loads of overheads, overheads they might overthink it try and overcompensate a little bit and start you know hitting harder trying to do smashes which can work in your favor Very, very awkward to deal with when you're getting lob after lob after lob. It tires you out as well. Strategy number three is called the fridge. Now, I've made an entire video on this strategy, breaking down all of it, the pros and the cons for it. So I'll leave the link for that video in the description below. Just for players that have never heard of the fridge, this is basically where you just target one player. What this does is it makes that player quite nervous, it makes them more tired, and the other player that isn't being targeted gets quite frustrated and they also get cold. That's where the name the fridge comes from. One thing I'd say on this is I'd only recommend you do the fridge in tournaments and very competitive matches. In friendly matches, there's just no point and it's not too fun for the player that's not getting targeted. So check out that video if you want more information on the fridge strategy. Number four is called the rush strategy. The rush strategy is a very aggressive strategy and this is when you're gonna push the net very aggressively. Often when you play better players, the biggest problem is you're stuck at the back of the court and they're killing you with their volleys, their smashes and their overheads. It can be very tricky to play perfect lobs, especially if someone's using the maintaining strategy against you. So what we can do instead is we're gonna rush the net even if we don't hit the ball all the way past the white line. If you play a lob that doesn't make it all the way to the back of the court and someone still plays a bandeca, that's when you're gonna use the rush strategy and charge the net with your partner and try and meet their bandeca with a volley and then take the net for yourself. The next thing as well is if you play any sort of chiquita and they hit up, again, you and your partner are gonna rush in quick and try and take the net. This strategy can be quite risky. However, when a game is not going your way and you're feeling like you're stuck at the back of the court and you can't take the net position, try the rush strategy out and you should get some good results. Before we move on to paddle strategy number five, if you need help choosing a paddle racket, you can check out my online paddle store, Everything Paddle. I have tons of information and multiple ways to help you choose the best one. You can also contact me personally on that website. Paddle strategy number five to implement in your game is the soft strategy. Now in this strategy, you don't want to use this for the entire match. You just want to use it on a few points here and there, or maybe just one game. And in these few points, you're going to focus mostly on precision, accuracy. Biggest of all is playing really, really slow. On all of your volleys, you're going to play this, and you're just going to focus on the length and the accuracy. So rather than hitting hard but short, I'm going to try and go deep 
but get good length and good spin as well. It's very common that in paddle matches, as the game goes on, players hit harder and harder and harder. This is when a change of pace is brilliant to throw your opponents off. Slow Bandekas into the side, volleys down the middle. The main point I wanna make is that if you play soft, but get good length, good spin, and a good direction, it is just as effective, if not more effective, than playing a really hard volley or a really hard overhead. It will be very effective and frustrating to play against. Strategy number six links very well with strategy number five, and this is the variant strategy. You want to make sure that when you're at the back of the court and the net position, you're playing with as much variety as possible. As the match goes along and players get more and more used to the speed of your ground strokes, they will play better and better shots because they get more used to how fast and hard you're hitting it. When you add variety, it becomes a lot more difficult for players to play good volleys and good overheads because opponents can't anticipate what ball is coming next. We're talking different speeds at the back of the court, chiquitas, lobs, playing hard at the body, playing hard to the backhand as well. It is very tricky for your opponents to get a good rhythm going when you're constantly changing the pace, changing the place, and adding a lot of variety. Hey little mama, yeah you heard about me. I'm a puppy like a pea, yeah, and a mommy. Yeah, I feel so hard like I'm chilling on the beach. Yeah, baby in the sun like the Teletubbies. Sing a low wall, pop a bottle off of your chain, swinging, clang, clang, and it costs a lot. Bitch, I'm always at the gorilla, yeah, and you are not bad as beat. Keep on going till you hit the spot. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bag, drop a drop a low. Mama a few times in that point, you saw him second guess because he's not sure what ball is coming. Paddle strategy number seven is called the BB strategy. BB stands for backhand and body. In this strategy, you're at the back of the court and you're only aiming at the player's backhand and at the body. Recently, I did a lot of research watching the World Paddle Tour matches. One of the main things I found was how often the players played towards the professional's backhand and at the body and never gave the pros a forehand volley. But this is the killer deadly shot, the forehand volley, compared to the backhand, which is much harder to kill. And when it's right at the body like this, this is very awkward as well. The great thing about going towards the backhand as well you don't have to hit it perfectly over the net. You can play it high because a high backhand is very awkward. There's not a lot I can do up here. If you play at the body as well, it's awkward, especially beginner and intermediate players. Don't always deal with the body best. A lot of players try and block like this. All I can do is really get the ball back. I'm not really gonna be able to play much of a winner with this. So at the back of the court, BB. Play towards someone's backhand and play directly towards the body as well. You can see how awkward that is, constantly to the backhand. Dad's trying to come around it like this on the forehand and he can't really do much to win the point. Strategy number eight is called the simple strategy. This strategy is really good to play when you're having sort of a rough patch in paddle, when you're not playing well, you're losing a lot of matches, you're not doing well in tournaments. The simple strategy is not overcomplicating your paddle at all. Whenever you get an easy ball, you're gonna play a lob. You're only gonna take the net position when you hit the ball past the white line. And then when you're at this net position, you're gonna keep it as simple as possible. You're gonna play volleys down the middle. You're gonna play bandekas across court just towards the opponent's feet. Simple paddle can be super effective. When I spoke to Louis Harris and Sam Jones, who are two of the best players in the UK, and I spoke to them about their advice to beginners, intermediate, and advanced players, the number one thing they said was to keep the paddle as simple as possible. So sometimes the best paddle strategy can be the simple one. Easy ball, I'm gonna lob. Take the net. Okay, easy band deck up. Okay, easy ball, now I can lob. Now I can come back. 
and I'm going to build this slowly now. Simple paddle, there it is, and then I can play a good shot. And there's the winner. The ninth and final strategy is the serve strategy. First of all, before you play a match or a tournament with your partner, tell them where you're gonna play majority of your serves to. So for example, when I play with Jake, he knows that I'm gonna serve to the glass 95% of the time on both sides. I'm gonna go glass this side, and then on the other side as well, I'm gonna go towards the side glass. I will then tell him during the match if I'm gonna serve down the tee instead. I play on the right here, Jake plays on the left. So if I suddenly serve down the tee, I know that that serve will throw the opponent off a little bit because it's the first serve down the tee out of 20. So then Jake knows to stand closer to the net and slightly more towards the center as well. The idea is the opponent's gonna be thrown off a little bit and they've got more chance of playing a weaker return so that Jake can step in down the middle and go for a smash or try and pop it out. I can't show you this strategy in full because it was just me and my dad filming. As you can see that when you serve down the tee, you usually get a slightly weaker return. So you can step in and attack the ball. By serving down the tee as well, it moves the opponent slightly out of position. So gaps open up to aim in for, as you can see in this last clip here, he moves to the side and then I can play the volley to the corner. So there you have it. Those are the nine paddle strategies. Let me know if you've got any other strategies that you like to use in your matches and tournaments in the comments below. And of course, remember to subscribe.